friends, welcome back. Okay, our new-ish memory verse. Are you ready? Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32. Think you guys can do that and learn that? I hope so. Like I said, this was my very first memory verse, and I love it. Okay, kids, let's pray. Dear God, you are so good. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for bringing us back to you. You made a way even after we sinned, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, we are learning about King Solomon again. We're going to learn about an amazing thing that King Solomon did. So remember, he asked God for wisdom, and God was pleased with that and gave him wisdom. And then, four years after Solomon was on the throne, he decided to build the temple. Do you remember David wanted to do that and God said, no, your son will do that. Well, this was God's promise, his word coming true. Solomon was going to build the temple. So he set to work. He got tons of wood, cedar from Lebanon. He got thousands of workers. He cut huge stone blocks to be the foundation and the walls. It was an amazing building project. And I brought a picture for you guys today. I hope that you can see that. There's a picture, um, kind of an idea of what the temple would look like. Okay, well, it took seven years to finish the temple. And that was because they did tons of beautiful work on the outside and on the inside. Want to know what it describes that the temple looked like on the inside? The Bible tells us that all the walls were made of this special wood and then experts carved into the wood all sorts of beautiful pictures and designs. And then they had gold, they overlaid it with gold. So the wood was underneath carved and then the gold was pressed up into all the grooves and the carving and they made beautiful, beautiful pictures. I brought some ideas of what it could look like. Okay, here is a carving that's been overlaid and it's pomegranates. I don't know if you can see them. Okay, here is a carving of vines, grapes and vines overlaid. Beautiful. And here was the vine. This was supposed to be something that was in the temple. So you've got these pillars with vines carved all around them in gold. Okay, well, I wanna tell you what the Bible tells us was carved into the walls of the temple. Palm trees, pomegranates, like hundreds of them. Like in one place, 200, and then in one place, 400. Pomegranates were a beautiful fruit. Open flowers, wreaths of leaves. Kids, what does that sound like to you? I brought a picture of what it sounds like to me. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like, I hope you guys can see that picture right there. Ooh, it sounds like a garden. This is actually out of one of our kitty Bibles, and it's a picture of a garden. Do you see the palm trees, the open flowers, the fruit, right? Well, that is exactly what the plan was for the inside of the temple. They wanted it. God wanted it to look like a garden. Why a garden? Because the temple was supposed to restore God back to man. And that's exactly how God had designed it to be in the very beginning, in the garden. The temple was supposed to bring us back to the garden. Can you imagine that? So that's what they made it look like inside. They had all these beautiful palm trees and wreaths and pomegranates and flowers blossoming all in gold to make it look like a garden, to remind us of the fact that when God made us in the beginning, we were with him together in the garden and things were so good. But our sin broke that relationship, kids. And the temple was supposed to help restore that. How would it do that? Well, people would come to the temple and they would bring an offering and sacrifice. The priest would sacrifice that animal and he would go between man and God. He would bring God and man back together, like a bridge kind of, through this sacrifice to say that they were sorry 
That was what the temple was for. And that was what the sacrifice and the priest, the priest was like a bridge, all to bring us back to the garden, just to be like where we were when we started and how God had designed it in the very beginning. Okay, so here we go. You've got the amazing temple that Solomon uh, built. Well, inside that temple was a room called the Holy of Holies. I brought another picture. I hope you can see. There were two huge angels. Now, this is kind of a funny picture. I hope you can see it well. There were two angels, and they had wings that stretched out from wall, and then they touched the tip of the other angel, and then there was a second one, and he stretched out, and right in the middle, in between those two giant angels, was the ark. The priests, when the temple was all built, they brought the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of God, into the temple. And guess what? When the priests left, a massive cloud filled the temple. They couldn't be in there anymore. They had to leave. God's presence, His glory was now in the temple. Where do you remember God taking the form of a cloud before? In the desert, in the wilderness, didn't God lead the Israelites through the, Israel, uh, through the wilderness for 40 years? And in the day, he was a cloud, a pillar of cloud. And at night, a pillar of fire. Well, this cloud enters the temple, and it's God's presence. And Solomon speaks to all the people, and he prays, and he says, Who is like our God? God, is who is like you? You've kept your promise to, to have David's son build a temple. You kept your promise. Do you know what things God said to Solomon? He said, concerning this house that you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and obey my rules and keep all my commandments and walk in them, obey them, then I will establish my word with you, which I spoke to David, your father, and I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. God was promising, I will live in this temple that you've made if you walk in my ways, if you obey my commandments. We heard that before. God's told that to Solomon before, right? David even told Solomon that. Okay, so Solomon then prays, and he prays to God and says, God, your people are going to sin against you. But please, when they come to this temple and they ask you for forgiveness, hear them and forgive them, please. And Solomon sacrificed many, many animals. And then the people went home happy because of this. Kids, the temple was built and people could go to the priest and ask for forgiveness for their sin. But they could not go directly to God. They were not allowed, the people were not allowed in that room they weren't allowed to be with the Ark of God. They couldn't go directly to God, but one day they would. Do you know that all these people back then were waiting? They were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for Jesus Christ to come because when Jesus came, when the Messiah came, we know now that he would make everything right ultimately. He would bring us back to God ultimately. Isn't that amazing, kids? How did he do that? By living a perfect life? and by dying in our place, by defeating sin, paying the debt for sin forever, by rising from the dead and being now even with God in heaven. That's how Jesus did that. Now, how do we go directly to God now? How can we pray and be heard by the Father? How can we have the Holy Spirit dwell in us and live with us? Well, we repent, asking God to forgive us, and we turn from our sin and we believe putting our trust only in Jesus Christ alone and what he did. That's what all these people back then, that's what they were waiting for. And they had the temple, but the temple wasn't the final answer. It wasn't the solution to the problem. It wouldn't fix it forever. It was reminding them of the garden. But you know what? When Jesus came, if we have faith in Jesus Christ alone, we are brought back to God. We are like it was meant from the beginning. And that's amazing, kids. And I hope that for you, and we pray that for you, and we love you. Just a couple reminders. Color your snowflakes in for the coldest night of the year. If you color them in and drop them off at the church, or let Miss Shara or Shanali or I know we'll come grab them, and we will put them up at the lighthouse for the walk for the coldest night of the year. We can support them in that way. So that's amazing. Keep saying your Apostles' Creed. We are giving out prizes for them. We're so proud of you. You guys have done a great job with that. Keep it up. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. See you later.